Welcome along to another episode of Toss with Tosin. Today, we're going to talk about Sir Alex Ferguson. Adam Crafton today mentioned that Sir Alex Ferguson will be leaving the club as an ambassador at the end of the season. They will no longer be paying him as a cut costing efforts, as Ineos says. Now, this is a very multi-complex issue because there's a lot of moving parts in what I'm trying to say, so bear with me. Sir Alex Ferguson is a legend. When you think about the legendary coaches in all sports, the Coach K, the Don Shula, Pat Summit, John Wooden, Phil Jackson, Vince Lombardi, even when you look at football, you look at Trapattoni, you look at Cruyff, you look at Paisley, you look at Clough, you look at Pep, you look at Carlo, Rennes Michels, LVG, Sachi. Sir Alex is up there with these legendary, iconic coaches. He's up there in any sport you want to think about, any coach, he's up there, right? He's the reason why Manchester United is a major icon. Obviously, Bobby Charlton, you know, Matt Busby, these are the people that helped build the foundation. Sir Alex took us another level. Manchester United need to get to another level. And Sir Alex Ferguson's shadow has weighed so heavy on this club. And part of it is because of Glazer ownership. And I'm going to get into all of this. But Sir Alex Ferguson is also the solution and the problem to Manchester United. He brought this club to such an iconic status because of who he is and because of the sort of manager that he was. But also at the same time, if you don't know this, please go look up Manchester United, Sir Alex Ferguson, Roy Keane, Rock of Gibraltar. Look all those things up. The Rock of Gibraltar incident is why the Glazers own Manchester United Football Club to this day. The Glazer family are based in Florida. They own the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's you know, a lot of stories about them, but the Glazers did a leverage buyout. And if you look at the way Chelsea bought, Chelsea were taken over after Roman, there was a clause where they said, you can't run Manchester United the way that, Ch that you can't run Chelsea the way Manchester United will run, excuse me. And that goes to say that the Glazers, the way they ran the club was horrible. Sir Alex Ferguson, however, was the great equalizer to that because as bad as neglectful as the Glazers were, Sir Alex was the equalizer because he was the scout. He was the everything. He was the coach. He was the father, the daughter. The son. He was everything at Manchester United Football Club. So when he left in 2013, there was no structure there. And you look at the modern clubs, the well-run clubs of 2024 and all the 21st century well-run clubs, Man City, all charges be damned, are an example of how well-run a football club should be on and off the pitch. You see with the women's team, their academy, their men's team, they're just a well-run machine. And then you look at Arsenal, you know, they've had their failings, but they're now starting to slowly get up there. The Cronkies have done a great job. Edu's done a great job. Mikel Tess has done a great job. Arsenal are killing it on and off the pitch. They're not to connect the previous generation to the new generation. Even if you take a look at Brighton and Brentford, always punching above their weight. We you know, have to look in England, look at Atalanta, one of the well-won clubs in Italy, just absolutely just dominating, finding talent. They won their first European title. They play some great football. Baltimore Glimp in Norway, another great example of a well-run club. So there are examples of how a club can be well-run from the top all the way down to the pitch. And that's what Manchester United needs to get to. Ineos have said, you know, their new CEO, Omar Barada, said that by 2028, Manchester United should be competing and winning the Premier League title. We want to hold them to their word. And obviously, I understand, you know, Eric Ten Hag is still in charge. I understand that. And he should be gone. I'm not saying that he shouldn't. But there are other steps and other things that Manchester United need to do as well. Because on and off the pitch, it's not looking good financially otherwise. So, Silas Ferguson leaving, he had to go. You know, he, again, like I said, he weighs heavy. You know, and he shouldn't be making decisions like hiring David Moyes. That should not have happened. They should let him be whatever he is, but not let him involve. So I think Lennon Sir Alex Ferguson go off his ambassador's ship. And he was, I think, at one point on the executive board, but he has to no longer be involved with decision making. He's done his thing. He's done his time. But it's time for someone else and the club now to take it to another level. And even if you look at other sport, and I hate cross-sport comparisons, but you take a look at, for example, my other sporting team, the Baltimore Ravens. They were found in 1996. Just constantly year in and year out, just winning, winning and winning and winning. They had Ozzie Newsom as their GM. He moves into a back row. And now Eric DeCosta is the face of the, the face of the franchise. He's the general manager of the of the whole entire franchise. You take a look at the 49ers, the Packers, Steelers. These are iconic NFL franchises, and year in, year out, they're competing. The Steelers have not had a losing season since 2003, and that goes to show that their owners care. And you need to take a look at the other side of Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones won that runs that team with an iron fist, they're not that good. Even the New York Knicks, the New York Knicks have finally started to get it right, and they're starting to realize from top bottom, they're trying to get it right. So again, Manchester United needs to figure out a way to connect themselves 
and be a well-run club, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch? How do you connect the iconic history, but also still main, still maintain how to be in the 21st century? And that comes with, you know, just a whole lot of things that is way above a lot of our pay grades. So, so Alex Ferguson, you are a legend. We love you. But even Wenger, take a look at Wenger's quote. Wenger had probably one of the best quotes when he left Arsenal. And I love this quote because Wenger has a self-awareness to understand that his presence weighs heavy. He says, after 22 years, maybe I arrived at the end of the role and people want to change and I can understand. I must say I was always loyal to the club because I felt my life was linked with this club. The club has chosen a different direction, but I can understand completely. And sometimes you need to change completely to have a new start. And my presence there could have been a problem. So I thought to give, I thought to stay away completely to give the club a chance to rebuild the connection with the new manager. And it has worked out. Obviously, we know Emery didn't do too hot with Arsenal. But guess what? Nikhil Teta took that reign. And now Arsenal don't have to live in the shadow of Arsene Wenger. And Manchester United need to get to that place where we don't need to live in the shadow of Sir Alex Ferguson. And by the way, there is no United Way. The only United Way is a non-profit organization. The United Way you think about is what Sir Alex Ferguson did. And that's where the sporting direction needs to come into place because come up with a new way of playing. Come up with a new identity. Come up with something where it's just plug and play. We can find the next hot coach like the Green Bay Packers did with Matt LaFleur. We can find a young and up-and-coming coach where he just fits and plugs in the system. And he understands how he can take, or she, they can take it to a new level. So Manchester United need to figure out a lot of things and figure it out fast. Off the pitch, on the pitch, not just the men's team, but also the women's team. Because Mark Skinner, I got my eyes on you. So for myself, Tosin, we're out. Everyone take it easy. Peace. Take a shot. Take a shot.